Hello everyone. Um, for today's video, I want to introduce you to a very exciting class being taught out of Penn State University, all on epidemics and understanding the spread and dynamics of infectious diseases. Um, the class is up right now on Coursera, and it's about two weeks in, um, but you still have time to join, and as it's free, it's just a fantastic resource for those of you that um, either have no background in epidemiology or, or kind of want to uh, build one or at least you know get a refresher um, it's it's a pretty exciting class because it talks about um, a lot of the basics of um, infectious disease but also the emergence of new diseases and how disease spreads and how it's controlled and uh, you know sort of what the future might look like uh, and best of all that, that doesn't really require you to have a previous background in the in the subject matter um, so it's it's pretty much um, available for anybody that just sort of has an interest in this area. Um, it also has a, a great um, section on selected readings here, so even if you don't have time to follow the course immediately and you're just kind of generally interested in the topic, uh, there's a lot of, uh, of materials in the course that, that you just might find useful for yourself. Um, really neat thing about this class is that they're also holding it in tandem with a online uh, participatory uh, kind of crowdsourcing game. Um, called Mookdemic. And in Mookdemic, the idea is that they get, you know, presumably all the folks in the MOOC and, and uh, other people that are just generally interested in uh, better, you know, understanding um, how, you know, potential diseases are spread in the environment to participate in this online game. Um, and in it, you know, based on your location and using your cell phone, you can scan for sort of these cases in and around you and sort of monitor the spread of disease um, through your environment, through a more global environment. So it's a really neat idea. Uh, if you want to kind of read more about it, there is a nice write-up um, here in one of my links. Here we go on Polygon. That kind of talks about uh, the um, project in, in a little more detail. And it's got some nice quotes from some of the um, participating instructors. So I, again, I'll put this link in the um, show notes, um, but I think it might be of interest to many of you. Um, so moving along, one of the other really cool things about um, the fact that there's so many people participating in this project is that they have a very active Twitter stream, right? And so if you just kind of go back even over the last couple of weeks, um, you can see that, that a lot of people are excited about this and sort of contributing different um, uh, analyses and, and uh, mapping products and, and whatnot. And um, one of the things you'll notice here is that they released the actual geotagged scanned cases. So this is coming out of McDemic, but there's a link off their page, and when you go to it, you'll come here. And in this first part, you'll see they have a nice little readme summary that explains uh, that they've anonymized the data and um, that the coordinates are not um, of the scanners, um, but they are approximately the 50,000 cases in the regular strain scanned within the first seven days. Um, and the data itself is fairly simple. There's uh, a fair amount of it here. It's just got a time stamp, a latitude uh, stamp, and a um, longitude stamp, right? So um, there's a lot of things that you can begin doing with this data. Uh, obviously, if you're working with an ArcGIS, one of the first things you can do is just take the data, drop it into something like uh, Microsoft Excel, and break it into your time and latitude and longitude columns and then import it as an XY um, uh, data file. Uh, but you know, um, one of the other things that was kind of fun looking through the Twitter feed was that some folks had actually begun taking the data and dropping it into various online um, mapping environments. Uh, and this user um, here, Twitter user um, DP, had uh, used um, CardoDB and had come together, uh, put together a pretty nice um, little map here looking at the first week of the spread of um, yeah, through the MOOCdemic um, environment. Um, so when you run across a map product like this, you know, um, I guess one thing to keep in mind is that many of these online mapping applications are actually very easy to use, uh, and it's amazing how sophisticated and quickly they are growing. Um, so what I wanted to do in this uh, case was instead of working with 
uh, the ArcGIS software and, and ArcGIS Online, um, which coincidentally um, you, you couldn't actually work with this data because um, ArcGIS Online has a, at least currently has a limit of 1,000 records um, for an imported CSV. Um, I wanted to introduce you to um, some of these other tools, um, and in this one, in particular, we're going to look at Carter DB. So. Um, to walk through the tutorial, essentially the first thing that you'd have to do is um, grab this time, latitude, and longitude data, right? So um, it's pretty easy to do just from within your web browser. You want to leave the README file alone. That's, that's nice for your reference, but you definitely don't need that in your final data set. So it's simply a copy and paste. Now there's a lot of data here, right? So you can, you can just simply um, highlight the data and go to the end of the document and uh, cut and paste it that way or do a page down until you get to the end of the document or however you want to get to it. Um, but basically, once you get an Excel, you're just going to paste the data. And once that's loaded, um, you'll see it's, it's all being dumped into uh, one column. Now I'm just going through this step. I, a number of you, if you know, you probably already know how to do this, just bear with me for a second. But for those of you that don't, um, once you paste it in, you can simply go up to data, and then you can do this option here, just text to columns, and it's going to ask you what the delimiting field is here, and in this case it's a comma, and I'm just going to hit next and finish. And now my data is broken up, right, so now it's pretty nice, I've got these two columns. So that's basically what I've already done here. I took the entire data set, dropped it into Excel, broke it into three columns. And I did something else. Um, I decided that, you know, because um, I'm a little bit limited here as far as some of the uh, analytics that I can quickly kind of run in this data set, I, I'm not going to really worry about doing too much more than just comparing um, the first day of um, this mock epidemic uh, with the most, uh, basically with, with day eight, um, which was the most recent data in the data set. Um, so you can see here what I did was after I pulled the data in, I stripped out everything that wasn't um, either October 15th or October 22nd, right? And then I just added another column here defining the day. And what I ended up with was I have about 5,000 records for the first day and then uh, only about 2,500 for um, day eight. Right, so it kind of makes sense. I, I think if you think about it, the participation or participation in the MOOC and the online game were probably really, really high that that first initial day, and then you know they've since probably leveled out a little bit. So we'll probably see that reflected in the data. All right, so I've got my data in. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to go to Cardo DB. Now Cardo DB is a is a nice tool for just beginning to do some basic. Um, online uh, mapping and, and uh, they've done a pretty good job of making the maps um, very attractive and easy to use and, and pretty easy to understand and um, it's just overall pr a pretty nice nice tool. Um, you can also set up a, a simple free account if you just want to begin getting started um, and so you know, once you're on the site just walk through sort of this mini tutorial that will walk you through how to upload your data and um, you're pretty much off and running. It's um, uh, you know, we're starting to see a lot of tools like this um, that are just making web mapping more and more accessible. And so once you've signed up for your account and you've started working with the data, one of the first things that they're going to ask you is to um, either upload your data or cut and paste it into the wizard. And so with the data that you have out of Excel, it's a pretty easy um, um, step. And once you do so, you'll end up with a table like this. Uh, where if you want to, you can go through here and define these uh, column types uh, or rename them or, or do whatever you want. Um, but you're pretty much off and ready to go and you can see it, it imported the data just as I needed it. Um, so the next step, once you've got your data in here and you've got it kind of broken up like this, is you can click on this map view and the map view button. So the, the, the feel will feel a little bit similar to some of the Google tools, right? You've got like your table view and then you've got your map view and um, you can start uh, start working with the visualizations um, from there. So when I click on map view, I'm going to come to this page here and you can see I've already loaded in some of the data basically um, to start pulling in a file. You can add your existing table 
right? And so mine was just called McDemic day one and day eight. I pull that in, I click add layer, and then I'm going to get one of these. So I've got it in here twice actually, but it's the same data. Now, when you open up the um, the browser window here, um, now remember I've got two days, right, that I, I kind of want to start working with, and it's in the same data set. So in my case, what I did was I just did a very simple uh, SQL query uh, to just separate out day one and day eight within the same table. So let me just zoom in here on this map to the United States. And looking here on this first, so there's two layers here. I've got layer one here, and then I've got layer two here. And then under layer one, I've got all these options, right? I've got a SQL wizard here. I've got my visualization wizard, and I've got info window stuff, and I can even look at the raw um, uh, CSS file, do some filters and other things with legends. So as you can see in this example, I've basically selected the density uh, visualization type. Um, but the other thing that I've done within the SQL window is um, for my SQL query, that the basic SQL query is just this, select star from McDemic day one and day eight. So this is the name of the the uh, um, file that I imported. And all I'm doing here is I'm just telling it that I only want to select the records where day equals one, right? And so that's my little statement. And then I can click apply query, and then that's going to give me only the results for the table looking at day one. So when I turn that layer on, and let me shrink this down. So this this is basically my my density surface, my simple density surface for the day one uh, participation in the McDemic game. And you can see down here, I've I've included a little legend here, infection state one, and lighter colors obviously um, represent less, and the darker colors are more. So that's all fine and good. And as you zoom in, you'll see it'll sort of rescale. Now I can go up to my second layer here and you can see that what I've done here is basically the same thing. I have uh, have a custom SQL query here and it's the same except now I'm just looking at just the records for day eight, right? All right, so my wizard's the same. I selected the same uh, visualization type, this density, this um, hexagon uh, visualization type and I just changed the color. So um, I, I did this just because I, I want to be able to kind of more clearly differentiate the day one and day eight. So when I turn that on, I'll now see a little bit of pink shown in the map. And let me turn off day one. And you can kind of see the difference here. All right. But pretty easy to do, right? I mean, that that's pretty much all you have to do. Once the data's in, then you can kind of start working with this. There's all sorts of different ways you can visualize the data. If you don't want to use kind of this hexagon approach, you can kind of do kind of a heat map. Um, and I'll get results looking something like that. So again, this is for my day one. Now, if I want to make it directly comparable to my day eight, I can select the same intensity here from the visualization wizard, and then I will change the color as well. OK, so here's uh, again my uh, heat map for day eight. And you can see that there's definitely more records uh, when you uh, compare it to day one, right? All right, so when you're all finished uh, modifying your map, you can click on this Publish button here. And it's going to give you a bunch of options. Um, I like to make this one shareable. And then you can simply cut and paste uh, this little link and mail it around, uh, share it with your friends, and you'll end up with uh, something like this, right? Um, so again, I'm using kind of the, the two color gradient here um, just to sort of illustrate the difference between the two days. Uh, and then that's it, and you're kind of off and running. So it's a, it's a great tool. It's a very easy way to do some quick and fun um, online mapping using the, uh, the data created through McDemick.